Good morning, everybody. Just prepping. I think everything is set up. Good morning, Dan Allen. Morning, Matt Mitchley. Hey, C. Till Bruiser. Hey, Matthias. Hey, Chris Sanders. Hey, Sam Chill. Hey, Burton. Sam says he watched the link for Sleepers review last night. Great stuff, man. Cheers, Sam. That was a that was a tough review to uh, to get through. The source material, obviously, the film material, <laughs> it's quite dark. But beautifully acted, yeah, great film. Believe it or not, I think Sleepers was one of the first films Ian and I reviewed this this year, of twenty twenty. It just it was one of those film reviews that uh, once it was finished, it went up, and YouTube rejected it. Then the film company was like, "No, you can't have it. We're taking it down." Had to go through all of the rigmarole of appealing and reappealing before we could get that video live. Same as what happened with Link. It was a very old request. Hey, fucking give me a username. Yeah, Gary the Snail is here. Although hopefully I'm not going to be going through this at a snail's pace. <laughs> my intention is to work my way through this Claire B scenario without saving once. It's something I've always wanted to do with a Resident Evil game. Um, I've never been able to always do. I always lose the nerve about halfway through. I'm like, no, I need to save it. But uh, I want to go for an A, a rate, an A rank. Um, I think on this version of the game you can't get an S rank and if you can I, I'm not sure how but I think A rank is the one that unlocks like all the extra weapons and everything else uh, and so in order to get an A rank I need to complete the game in under three hours um, I'm allowed to save it once but I only just want to save the once and uh, I'm not allowed to use any first aid sprays either 
So that that will be the challenge. Uh, hey, Ian. <laughs> he says he's here. He's just cleaning his toilet. <laughs> <clears throat> I do apologise if I sound a little bit croaky. Uh, I also apologise for not streaming earlier in the week, as I intended to do so. Uh, but after I streamed, I think it was last Friday, as the weekend went on, I started to feel a little bit more and more run down until Monday morning came around and I was sick as a dog. Um, which is uh, par for the course for me. If anybody knows me, I regularly get run down and quite ill. It's... Uh, I think I've said it in, in previous streams that my immune system is uh, is not the best, which is why it worries me with the current world crisis. Uh, but bear with me, I'm just finishing my breakfast coffee. And we'll get the show on the road. Resident Evil. So I'm going to have to load the uh, load the last Claire uh, Leon A playthrough to get the Claire B one. Here we go. In the midst well, I'll let the cutscenes play out uninterrupted, I think. Uh, let me know how the audio is for you, for me, compared to the game. encounter with one of the only other survivors. A woman named Ada. A spy seeking the deadly gene virus. However... Ada! Ada, wait! Leon was not the sole survivor of the incident. A girl named Claire Redfield was in town on business of her own. She came to uncover the mysterious circumstances of her brother's disappearance. Chris Redfield, a member of the Star's Alpha Team. Only now, her mission has become quite simple. Basic survival within the nightmare that was once Raccoon City. Oh shit, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Man, I don't think I'll ever get tired of watching this opening cut sequence. <clears throat> it's slightly changed for the Claire version, obviously. I see a question there, Tommy and uh, Matt. I'll get back to you in a second. Guys, I'm a maniac. Why'd he bite me? Why'd he bite me? Hello? Is anyone here? Hello? Uh, hello? <laughs> Look, I'm sorry I bothered you, okay? Just don't come any closer. Are you listening? <laughs> I think we can skip the rest of this now. <clears throat> Wait, so it's don't exactly where it intercrossed with Leon's opening. Uh, so uh, Tommy said, what did I think of the Resident Evil 3 remake? Um, I loved it. Uh, I really did love it. Not as much as I loved the second one, though. Um, I think the Resident Evil 2 remake was was really well done. 3 was, was a rush job and left me even more disappointed than the Resident Evil 2 remake did. Oh, balls. That's what a start. What a start. I can even get out of the first screen without being bitten. Uh, but yeah, I still really enjoyed the uh, the Resident Evil 3 remake. I got about 35 hours out of it and maybe about 5 hours out of Resident Evil Resistance so far. Um, so I, I haven't got my money's worth out of the Resistance mode yet. Um, I'll, give, I'll put some more hours into it later. Uh, and Matt Midgley said, Gary, do you think uh, Better Call Saul was a surpassed Breaking Bad? Uh... 
the 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 last season of Better Call Saul has been some of the best television I've ever seen, and I absolutely love the uh, <clears throat> the Kim Wexler character and Saul and Mike. You know, they are just fantastic characters, and that show, oh my god! Like when when the most recent season just finished, what was it Tuesday for us in the UK? I was just like, oh my god, there's one season left, and I I'm, I really don't want to leave the Breaking Bad universe behind. It's been so good. <laughs> Uh, Mongo Mongo says, Gary, did you shave your beard? I shaved it about a month or two ago. Um, and because of the uh, the way our reviews go up, like I said, over the... Oh, that zombie's blocking the stairs. Um, so over the next couple of weeks or month of reviews, you're going to see my beard grow and retract <laughs> over the next few weeks. <laughs> I'm surprised that this is the last living cop in Raccoon City. You'd think he'd have some better training than this. <laughs> that happens to land on him as well. Put him out of his misery. <laughs> But um, that that cop that just died right there, he uh, he actually looks like um, Chief Irons, the uh, the chief of police. Uh, with the Claire run through, we'll actually see him probably in about 30, 40 minutes or so. Uh, but he looks just like that cop from that cutscene. Okay, here we go. Oh, quick, get the ammo, get the ammo, get the ammo. I'm going to try and make it through the door at the end of the corridor so I don't get pecked to death. Oh, no, still got pecked. Not to death, but... <laughs> uh, Michael Jackson says, Hey, Gary, Australia says hi. Long weekend here to celebrate ANZAC Day. Cool. I don't know what day that is, but... Hey, it's a reason to celebrate. So long as you're doing it safely. <laughs> So I'm going to try to remember the order of where to go in this game because of course the, the B scenarios are different to the A scenarios and depending on which character you are because obviously Leon starts on one side of the police station now Claire has come in through this way. Oh fuck me, there's a liquor already. <laughs> Run away! Daydreaming Davies says he hasn't seen a helicopter accident like this since he was swinging his penis around and caught it on the chest of drawers. <laughs> Cheers for that, Daydreaming Davy. <laughs> um, right, there's one thing I don't ever use in most of the Resident Evil games, is a knife. Just keep the one herb on us for now. Um, so, one of the first things I need to do is get the unicorn symbol, and then I need to head out and probably have a word with Brad. Can hear the zombies. Oh, here we go. Got to be careful. Got to got to listen carefully to uh, because obviously one of the main things about Resident Evil, one of the things that helps build the horror, is not seeing something on screen because of the way of the cinematic camera angles work. But if you hear, if you listen carefully, you can hear the zombies just out of, out of frame. And then you step right into that frame, and then you've only got a second before they're right on top of you. That's just one of the, the you know, one of the, the ways the classic Resident Evil worked with the horror. But it's really effective. So, I think I've run out of ammo there. I still had three in the, in the gun. Just back up slowly. <clears throat> Put them down. You know, and a lot of people don't like the tank controls, but when you have the fixed camera angles, the uh, the tank controls work really well for it. Complements it really well, which helps get kind of get you back in the feel for tank controls. I know a lot of people don't like them, but uh, it doesn't really take too long to get used to them. Let's drop the ladder. Push the button. Yes. 
It's like Dark Souls. <laughs> Making shortcuts. Sam Chu says atmosphere is real for sure. Yeah, the atmosphere and the atmosphere and the music in these old uh, survival horror games just perfect. You know, the first three, four Silent Hills, <clears throat> the first two, three Resident Evils. Okay, so we got the grenade launcher, which is Claire's main weapon, I would say, other than the pistol. Um, she does have access to the machine gun if it's left behind, the bow gun, and I think like a taser gun, a shock gun, which I don't think I've ever really used. So yeah, there was, there was a herb hiding there all along. So yeah, you can hear Brad stumbling around down here. I don't know whether to go straight in for the grenade launcher or go through all this pistol ammo. I think I'll just use the pistol ammo. Oh, there's one thing I did want to check, actually. Um, I went through the whole Leon campaign, and yeah, there is an actual... Oh, press the wrong button. There is an actual auto-aim, which should make life just a little bit easier, because you don't have the quick turn. Oh shit, he's right there. And Brad is one of the toughest zombies in all of Resident Evil. He'll probably take the whole clip before he actually drops. Run away again. <clears throat> Michael Jackson says, uh, thoughts on no uh, Hollywood activity, Gaz? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit sad that, uh, you know, I, I like to watch old movies. I like to watch my favorite movies. And I like to mix it in with the new releases every now and again. And yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, not having any new new cinematic releases. There's obviously been a few films that I've been looking forward to this year that have all been pushed back to next year. Uh, but, you know, it's can't really sweat it. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, it's for the best. It just means we'll have a glut of things to look forward to next year. You know, I'm sad that Ghostbusters is delayed. Or the Witcher series is delayed. You know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that I want that I'm, I'm just going to have to wait for. But, again, you know, it, that's fine. It just means I get to revisit and re-experience lots of old old shows again. Uh, boss says, when did I shave? Yeah, I shaved about a month ago, maybe a little bit longer. Um, so yeah, over the next few videos you're going to see the, the beard grow and retract over and over again. <laughs> um, so now I have that, that key and now, now I go head up this way. Just like, do I open those doors? No, I need the blue key card, the stars card to open the doors down here. First thing I need to do is to go get the valve and put out the fire by the helicopter. Which means another run past the liquor and the crows. Boss says it has helped me to catch up with some of the stuff you missed. Yeah, exactly, yeah. There's a, there's a glut of films and TV shows that I never got to see over the last few years that uh, now I can catch up on. Hey, Carrie Louise. So we'll store the uh, the costume item. I don't need that just yet. And uh, we'll store the herbs as well. I should probably keep at least one herb on me the whole time, considering I'm, I'm not going to save at all. No saving. Um, but I'm running away from the liquor. Again, I'm, I'm making a mistake there. I should probably just walk away from the liquor, not sprint away. Because the moment you start sprinting, that gets their attention. Um, oh no, I have I have that key, so I need to head down this way now. Uh, down into the the rest of the precinct to get the valve. And I think there's something else useful down there. Kerry Louise, yeah, you love this game. I love this game. Like when the remake came out, I was like, oh yeah, the remake, best thing ever, best thing ever. But then you know, after a little bit of time has passed, I'm like, the best Resident Evil remake is the first one. Like the you know, not the director's cut, but the uh, the GameCube exclusive one that then got the HD remaster got. Sorry, the remake got an HD remaster, uh, which was fantastic. I would say that is the best of all the Resident Evil remakes so far, um, just because it's also faithful to the original game with the uh, the original camera angles and everything. I need that valve. I don't think I need to kill all the 
the police that are in here. I think I only come here the once, but I want to preserve my herbs as well. Can't actually shoot that cop. She won't aim for him. He's stuck in the doorway. Oh, there we go. I mean, the Resident Evil 2 remake, I don't think it was bad. But, like, as a big fan of the games, they just felt like, you know, <laughs> they just felt like love letters to fans of those games. Can't actually see them down there. Okay. Uh, 2236. I remember this safe combination now better than my own phone number. <laughs> Granted, there's only four numbers, but still. I want some ammo. And herb or two behind the desk. Josh says, Ian keeps surprising you when he talks about his past life on here. <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a very private person, mostly. Mostly. Unless I've, unless I've had a lot to drink. <laughs> and then I'm an open book. I start talking about stuff I probably shouldn't. <laughs> Running pretty low on ammo. Oh, where did you come from? Get out of here. Uh, you have the remake on Steam. Found it good, but uh, a lot more difficult. Yeah, yeah. Uh, boss says, "Great thing about these playthroughs and streams is that I never played these games, and now I'll never need to having to see you, having seen you do it." Cheers, boss. I mean, there is there's still a big difference between between watching and playing the game, um, but you, at least watching the game through, you do get to experience, you know, all the surprises. Um, but th there are some games that I like to do that that uh, I've gotten real no intention of playing them, but I'll happily watch somebody else play through. Uh, I was just like, do I have to run back down and get the key? I'm like, no, nope, no, nope, that's the Leon playthrough. But yeah, Josh, I mean, I think Ian and I have shared quite a lot of personal stories um, over, the, over the podcasts. I'm looking forward to getting back to the podcast, actually. It was only, I think, yesterday I realised, I was like, shit, we haven't done, like, a podcast in two months. I miss those. Is there anything? I think there might be hand. Oh, it was handgun ammo or shotgun ammo. Is it grenades? Acid rounds. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Which reminds me, I think I might actually need those acid rounds round about now. I don't know why. <laughs> there he is. Let's go and give it to you. <laughs> Look at that badass face. It's um I mean if you think about it, that helicopter had six six cylinders underneath it and only dropped off one of them. It makes you wonder where the other five went. And I think you see them like I said in Resident Evil 3, you see some of their corpses. Deep breaths. Two acid rounds. Let's run the fuck away. Three, four, five. Oh, he's teetering. He's teetering. And down he goes. Whew. See, he's not as scary as Nemesis. <laughs> like, after playing the Resident Evil 3 remake and Nemesis just, you know, flying, you know, spider manning across the city walls and jumping right down in front of you again. Like, even though... My problem with the Resident Evil 3 remake is that they were heavily scripted and you, after a playthrough, you knew exactly where Nemesis was going to drop down, where he was going to spring out from. You know, it's a scripted moment when he has the flamethrower. It's a scripted moment when he has the uh, the rocket launcher. Um, and there's like only one place, when you're doing a speedrun of the game, there's like only one place where you know um, that uh, that he's going to be there or not be there. And I, I, th I think it's the same for this Resident Evil 2 as well. I think Mr. X only appears at scripted locations, unlike the remake, which they did perfectly well, where you can hear him moving through the building, uh, stalking after you, which I thought was great. 
So I don't need that for a little while. Uh, let's stash away some more health. Keep the one. Still need that key. Uh, which character is this? And is this her default outfit? Yeah, this is Claire. This is her default outfit. This is what she rode uh, into town on to find her brother. Uh, there will be a costume change. Obviously, I have the key. Uh, but that costume... Well, there was a liquor in here. I guess he's gone now. <clears throat> I'm guessing Mr. X killed it. Oh. What was that sound? I'll check it out later. <laughs> I guess that sound was coming through that doorway. Um, in the other room. Um, we'll go into that in a bit later. So, this was the liquor room. And because the uh, the liquor didn't jump through that window and, and get Leon. I know it's going to be jumping down through here. <laughs> I still have my acid rounds equipped, yeah. There he is. So, the grenade launcher with Claire, it's it's such a problematic weapon. It's just like that. You've just got to see it. When you fire the weapon, it fires overhead. Like, right over the enemy's head. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm dying. I didn't mention this in the previous review, but... I always considered this the danger animation when she does this. The, uh, the roads walk. Joke on him! Joke on him! <laughs> Tommy says, way too many cutscenes and he turned way too animalistic early for the clock tower fight. Didn't feel like Nemesis. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, he transformed way too soon. Um, okay, I'm just going to hobble into the save room. <laughs> Come on! Come on! <laughs> I love, I love uh, is it Joe Palato's performance in Day of the Dead. It's so over the top, but it just so is within keeping of the tone of the film. <laughs> um, let's take out another green herb and combine them. Was that a full heal? I can't quite remember. Yeah, it is a full heal still. Damn Day of the Dead. Yeah. Classic. I still love that film. I never, you know, on the first viewing of that film, I hated it. I was just like, oh, why did the scientists and the and the civilians have to fight against each other? Why couldn't they just work together? It would have been a better film. I was like, no. It is what it is, and it works the way it does. Hey, dreaming, David. What are you singing about? Ain't no camel toe wide enough. <laughs> Uh, Claire was a college student, I believe, and uh, brother Chris was in stars. That is right. Uh, I believe Claire is only 18 or 19 during uh, this game. So she's quite young. Sam Chill, no, you can never have enough green herbs. Especially when you stack them, oh my. <laughs> so that's why Claire's feeling pretty fine right about now. Okay, uh, back to the pistol. Save some grenades. Should be a couple of Zombronis in here. At least one thing with Claire is that, um, yeah, she's 19. Um, is that uh, she has the, uh, the lockpick instead of the lighter. And I, be I believe there is a table in here that you can unlock with the lockpick. And if I remember rightly, it, it has the um, a first aid spray in it, which is absolutely useless for me on this run here. Oh, there's more zombies. Can I put him down before he gets too close? Yeah. The camera's obscuring the blood, so I can't see if he's, if he's really dead. Oh, fuck. Run away. I think that put him down. Yeah. I do like her outfit though. I do like the fact that she's got a gun, uh, knife holster on her, her her left shoulder, and of course the Made in Heaven jacket is quite quite iconic. It is if you're a Resident Evil fan. I think Chris has that as one of his alternate costumes in one of the other games. I was gonna say, oh wait, this is the liquor hallway, but nope, not anymore. Hey, pint of milk. Oh, I've got one bullet in the chamber. I should reload that. 
This key is useless now. Throw it away. Yep. Uh, so it was the crank that was in here for Leon. I'm guessing it is the lighter in here for Claire. Which I'll need to go and... Uh, so, I mean, it's one of the uh, sort of inconsistencies about the A and B playthrough is that it's like, okay, so it, it's set up that, you know, Leon's already doing his playthrough that we saw. And uh, but I'm like, well, how come that, you know, how come things I need to do again that Leon already did? Like burn the, you know, the fireplace, which melted the portrait, which revealed the red gemstones. I thought, didn't Leon do that? Why do I have to do that too? But, uh, you know, this is one of the last Resident Evil games to, to kind of do that. Like, Resident Evil Zero kind of gives you the two playable characters almost from the get-go. At least Resident Evil 1, it's like, choose to play Jill or Chris. That's how you experience the story. Resident Evil 2, play as, you know, Leon or Claire from the get-go. And there's no other Resident Evil games that have done that. Um, I guess, you know, Resident Evil uh, 5, you have Chris or Shiva. Is it Shiva? And Resident Evil 6, you have the, you know, completely different um, characters. But they've got their, you know, self-contained storylines. Is he down? Couldn't tell. Couldn't hear him over my own speaking. <laughs> yeah, Vandal, young girl, but she still handles weapons like a hardened veteran. <laughs> yeah, she's, um... I'd say she's a little bit more capable in this game compared to uh, Code Veronica, even. An oil painting hangs above it. A sacrifice to the hellfire. Burn it! Burn it with fire! Yeah, it is Shiva, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things with Resident Evil, isn't it? They very rarely bring up the uh, the B characters or the side characters again. Like um, like Billy in Resident Evil Zero never turns up again. Carlos in Resident Evil 3 never turns up again. Shiva in Resident Evil 5 never turns up again. <laughs> it's like, if you're going to have these B characters, I don't know, maybe, maybe put some of the A characters in there. Uh, but uh, I actually discovered something. I'm not sure if it's true, but... Um, you know, one of, the, one of the worst characters in all of Resident Evil is Steve from Code Veronica. And I discovered a little something, and that was, you know, Code Veronica was originally going to be, uh, I think, Resident Evil 3, until they shelved it and, you know, made it Code Veronica because of licensing agreements with Nintendo. And it was supposed to be Leon and Claire in Resident Evil Code Veronica, which was Resident Evil 3 originally and uh, they were actually going to kill off Leon Kennedy like they do Steve in, in Code Veronica which is why you know Claire gets quite, quite upset um, but it was because they delayed Code Veronica and they realized that there was a lot of fan love for the Leon character they were like oh shit like maybe we shouldn't actually kill the Leon character <laughs> like he's a he's a bit of a fan favorite and so, uh, Leon was al almost on the chopping block at one point. Will you use the special key? You've used the special key. There it is. The flashy outfit. We'll put it on. We don't have a choice for Claire, it's just the one outfit. There's an old gun here. Will you take it? It's not even an option. Oh yeah, there is. Will you take the Colt SAA? Hell yeah, I'm gonna take it. I ain't gonna need any other gun. Put the standard one away. Did I even reload it? No, that is that's good timing. <laughs> it's absolutely out of ammo. Now we're gonna use the old Colt. Let's stash away some uh, some healing. I don't need that. I don't have any keys, so I think I'm now heading up to the Star's office. Should actually equip the weapon. Josh says, I learned something from Ian. Apparently, watching stuff on your phone is watching TV. I said I didn't have TV. He asked me where I watched YouTube from then. <laughs> I gave the answer. Well, yeah, you, I guess on your phone. Like, um, uh, I, I know a fair few people that don't watch much TV at all. Uh, and they uh, and they consume a lot of their media through their phone. Like, you, you know, a lot of the streaming stuff, you can stream straight to your phone. You know, I guess it is now a... 
you know, it's a replacement monitor, I guess, for some people. Um, it doesn't really matter how you consume your your entertainment, really. But you got to remember, Ian, Ian is very old-fashioned sometimes. <laughs> Again, like, Leon did this puzzle in his A playthrough. It's, it's that caretaker again. He's been here. He just put, puts everything back right afterwards. Gotta reset those puzzles. You don't know who else will be through here. Has a surplus of the red gemstones as well. <laughs> uh, Tommy says, is the Colt a bit more powerful? It is a little bit more powerful than the standard standard handgun. It has one major drawback, though, is it only holds six pistol rounds in the chamber. Uh, ben Ray, you don't watch TV, to be honest, no. I, I actually didn't... I, I stopped watching, like, broadcast TV when I was about 17 or 18. I just got sick and tired of all of the commercials over and over again. Uh, and then Kerry Louise says, yeah, some stuff you need to watch on a bigger screen. I absolutely agree. Like, I... You know, sometimes you need to see something in a theatre, on a projector, on a big screen. Sometimes your own TV is good enough. And I would say, you know, sometimes watching, you know, fluffy, you know, fluff YouTube videos, you know, just whiling away the hours is, is fine on, on your phone. Unless, you know, you've got one of those funky 4K resolution monitors on your phone, then, you know, however you, however you want to watch it. Oh, excuse me. Oh, on again. Yeah, it's Chris's diary. We read that with Leon's playthrough, even though no it should have been Claire who's actually reading it. <laughs> Let's split up, look for any survivors, and get out of here. Yeah, I heard someone screaming about right. ten minutes ago. I probably should have uh, investigated that. But... Here's a radio. <laughs> Take it. Hey, Merchant, how's it going, dude? That way we can keep in touch if anything happens. Yeah, I know how a radio works, Leon. And the bow gun. Yeah. It's the one gun. I'm going to use it the once, I think, and then put it away. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, Rebecca's first aid, sp uh, first aid spray. Do I need it? Nope. Not this playthrough. The precinct key. I don't know if there's anything else useful here. There's something I didn't notice before. This is Jill's desk here, and if you look right at the bottom of Claire's feet, you can actually see the uh, the gold emblem from the uh, the first Resident Evil mansion. I don't know how Jill still has that in her uh, in her inventory or in the box. <laughs> I guess she was keeping it for just in cases. Yep, yeah, we, we don't need to read the facts. We got the memo: zombie apocalypse. Oh, more screaming. Oh. It wasn't the same scream we heard earlier. Uh, did I actually equip the... There we go. So yeah, the Colt SSA, uh, SAA. Uh, it needs reloading a lot, so you might see this menu pop up quite a few times. <laughs> it's one of those things where you don't want to go into a room of zombies and have one bullet still in the in the chamber. Like, <laughs> walking into a situation like this. Uh, so yeah, I think this is where I used the bow gun the one and only time in the game. Yeah, it's pretty, it's a good weapon, you know. It, it sprays bolts out, puts zombies down no problem. But just clearing out that horde of zombies there has left me with three shots left. <laughs> so it's like, it's hardly worth it. Oh yeah, that's where Sherry escaped down there through the gap in the door. But she's gone now, we'll find her later. Yeah, I'll use the lockpick. Pistol ammo, lovely, lovely, lovely. Plenty of now. I remember, Gary, that you had Disney Plus. I had a free trial, but not all the episodes of The Mandalorian were on it which annoyed me a bit. I don't know why UK decided to release them week by week. Yeah, it's a little bit annoying that they've decided to go that way. It's like the whole thing's been released already. Like, why the weekly drip feed? And, you know, it's one of those reasons it's so it's to make sure that you have Disney Plus for your free trial and then, you know, that it'll roll on into the next thing.
you know, I, I'd much prefer them to uh, to just release the whole thing in one go. I think everybody does, really. It's You can grumble about it, maybe delay getting your Disney Plus subscription if that's all you're really wanting to see. Uh, I'm just like, what do I do here? Nothing. You need to push the button. I think it's the same in every playthrough. I think it's just the left two just need to be moved to the right once. Um, I'm just gonna... Just gonna have to use that herb, unfortunately. Yeah, Carrie, she needs to go back to the Arkley Mansion. She forgot her lockpick. <laughs> I don't know how I ended up with the lockpick. I guess Chris just went, yeah, I guess you can take it, Claire. You don't need it, Jill. You're already the master of unlocking. But then, in the original Resident Evil 3, Jill comes to the star's office to get her lockpick, which isn't here in this game. So, <laughs> maybe she did. But then in the remake, Carlos comes to the, the police station instead. Oh, it doesn't make sense. doesn't all add up anymore. Boss said, the last time he went to a theater, there was a false bomb alert. As the only cop who happened to be there at the time had to secure the scene first and stay for five hours until all clear. Ugh. It's frightening and frustrating and horrible all at the same time. I mean, I obviously I worked in a the theater for... Uh, I've worked in two different cinemas. Um for a few years each and uh, we had you know every three or four months or so the, the big fire evacuation drills bomb training drills as to what to do if there was suspicions of and it was you know, usually just evacuate everybody out of the building as calmly and collectively as possible uh, so I've got both those stones now that's good I should be able to go and put them away upstairs um, but there's some other areas I need to go into as well Harry Louise, isn't Resident Yeah, Resident Evil 3 is set 24 hours before Resident Evil 2 and 24 hours after it. Yes. Yeah, um, it's up until uh, Jill gets knocked out, gets infected by Nemesis. That's, like, all of that was before Resident Evil 2, and then when she wakes up, Leon and Claire have already escaped Raccoon City. Oh, crap. Real quick! Ah, not quick enough. Oh crap. Oh no! I think this is time for a grenade launcher. I don't know about you. What? The zombie took a grenade point blank range. Any crawlers? Any fakers? No. You're all done for. Nope. I can, I can still hear him. He's there. Hiding out of frame. And, of course, he's not quite dead yet. I kind of wasted a little bit of ammo there, but it's fine. Um, trying to remember what's down this way now. You're surprised that Bryce Dallas Howard directed episode 4 of The Mandalorian. Well, you've got to consider that um, Bryce Dallas Howard's father... It directed the Star Wars, <laughs> the Solo movie. So it's kind of like, uh, hey, she's my daughter, and you know, and she's 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 hot, so she can direct too. <laughs> she was fine. It was a it was a fine episode of of the show. I imagine she had a lot of support making it. And you know, I I don't really know the behind the scenes. I know behind the screen, though, that there's a liquor just waiting to pounce. Um, I think I thought he was going to pounce when I picked up the stone, but I'm guessing it's only when you pick up the first aid spray. Shall I go in there and tease it? Pick up the red herb. Combine that with the red one. I'm trying to remember if there's any items in there with the liquor. Can I open the door? Yeah. So this door's not locked. It's just like, no. Tank controls was just being a little bit... The hitbox of the door was just a little bit off. Oh, you hear it. You can hear it before you see it. I'm like, where is it? Where is it? I can hear it breathing. And there it is up there on the 
<laughs> on the ceiling. Lots of ammo. Thank you very much. You can actually see it's saliva just dripping on the ground. That's so creepy. <laughs> Nepotism in Hollywood is a normal thing. Yeah, it is. It is. But, you know. Bryce Dallas Howard, she's, she's, she's very pretty. I actually, I really, I really enjoyed her performance in uh, one of the Black Mirror episodes. It was the one where uh, everyone was trying to get like, um, like a hundred percent like approval rating. You know, where every social interaction you have with somebody, they can like leave a review of how the interaction went. It was just like, oh, it was a disturbing, you know, look into the possibilities of like Facebook and Twitter and social media going on overdrive. That's quite frightening. Uh, so I've got that precinct key now. Which one is it? It's the diamond one. I'm trying to remember where that goes. I think I know where it goes. And I think I need to go head back to the other side of the police station again. Didn't like her as Gwen Stacy. Was she Was she Gwen Stacy? It was... Was that the the Superman? Uh, Superman Spider-Man films? I barely remember. It's locked from the inside. Ah, okay. I should have opened it from when I was in there. I guess I'll have to take a detour all the way around. You kind of miss those liquor noises in the newer games, yeah, definitely. I miss I miss all the sound effects and music scores in the uh, in the new games. At least with the Resident Evil Two remake, you know, you had that option of of playing the original the original music alongside, which was great. That that really enhanced my experience and enjoyment of the remake a hell of a lot more. Okay, so I think it's in this room and it's to the right. No, I've got to run all the way around. I'm just trying to remember the map. Like, I shouldn't need to look at the map too much. I kind of, kind of have a vague memory of it now. Wasn't it Emma Stone? Yeah, I, I don't remember who played Gwen Stacy. Um, oh, that was the key. Yeah. So I think in here we'll get the uh, the explosives. So we can remove the helicopter wreckage. Use that lockpick. So now all I need is the detonator. I can't remember where the detonator is either. I'm sure we'll find it. I'm sure it's along the way. As one thing I do like about this game is that it's still fairly linear. You know, there's a few branching areas, but it's still fairly linear. All still coming. Chewing through ammo here, chewing through it. Still going. Oh, I had a horrible feeling I was going to reload right in front of his face then. He's still alive! Have it! Kind of worried me that she didn't auto aim for this one. Oh, he's done. Oh, oh and there's the detonator already. Lovely. Oh, but I can't pick it up. Oh! Can't combine those. Can't do anything with that. Just gonna have to use that green herb again. Oh! <laughs> now I can mix this. If only I could have dropped the green herb on the floor temporarily. <laughs> Is there anything else in here? Some ammo in the closet? Yeah. That makes up for that. I unlocked it. Do I need to go that way? Yes, I do need to go that way. It's a shortcut now back into the main hallway of the police, uh, the police office. Fanning that hammer along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do like the cult. It's just annoying that it takes a lot of reloading. Uh, Sony, she says uh, she played Gwen in the Raimi saga. Okay. You know, I haven't seen the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films in quite a long time. I think I can take... Uh 
Take those stones with me now. Put the herbs away. Let's uh, let's take all of this stuff. This is awesome. Key items that I can put away now. Okay, she's a civilian, but she can do the hip shooting. Is <laughs> she Texan or something? I don't know. I think. I mean, it's a novelty thing. We're having this weapon because uh, it comes with the costume. So I don't know whether you know whether it's canon <laughs> that she's you know able to just hip fire the the old cult. But uh, yeah, it's Resident Evil. It's like. It's like the Leon character in uh, when he gets the tank top costume, you know, he fires his gun like like a gangster, you know, kind of like side on, which I've been told is like a big no no because you'll you'll break your wrist if you keep shooting somebody with the gun side on. As cool as it looks in film, I don't know whether it's the you know the caliber of the the ammo that's using or the power of the weapon. Uh, Merchant says, what system are you playing this on, Gary? Um, I'll, I'll quickly show you. This will give you a clue. <laughs> Although, it doesn't quite match up. <laughs> Something's not right here. <laughs> uh, so I'm actually playing this on a PC, emulating the, uh, the Nintendo version of Resident Evil 2. Uh, with um, the Resident Evil 2 HD mods to make the game look as glorious as it's looking right now. Uh, this is the best I think that Resident Evil 2 will, will probably ever look. I mean, there might be even more mods out there which do some crazy things with it, but uh, yeah. This is the best I've ever seen the game game looking. So we heard that scream outside earlier, and it will make you wonder what happened here. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I thought you were another one of those zombies. Are you Chief Irons? Yes, that's me. And just who are you? No, don't bother telling me. It makes no difference. You'll end up just like all the others. That's the mayor's daughter. I was told to look after her. But I failed miserably. Just look at her. She was a true beauty. Her skin nothing short of perfection. But it will soon putrefy and she will turn into a zombie within the hour like all the others. There must be some way to stop it. In a manner of speaking, there is. Either by putting a bullet through her brain, or by decapitating her completely. And to think that taxidermy used to be my hobby. But no longer. Please. I'd really like to be alone now. So he's a pretty messed up character. We can tell just from that cut sequence that his sanity has uh, reached maximum levels of unstable. And also makes you wonder... I mean, we didn't hear a gunshot. but the And I always thought it was his own daughter, but it, he actually said there, it's the mayor's daughter. Oh my god, it's... I'm just looking at the uh, the outfit and I'm like, she's a, she's a Terminator. Like, that's not her belt right above her midriff, is it? It looks like... It looks like a machine under there. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Claire's a robot. Unless she's just wearing something, you know, I don't know about. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Gamer says, You've never played this game. You played the, rem uh, the remake a few months back and that was your first ever Resident Evil game. Well, that's a nice introduction and I'm, I just hope that the remake brings you back to the originals. Turn the light on. Boo! Ah! Wait. Let me go! Easy, easy there. I'm not a zombie. You're safe now. <laughs> My name's Claire. What's yours? Sherry. Do 
you know where your parents are? They both work at the Umbrella Chemical Plant, near the city limits. The chemical plant? Then, what are you doing here? My mom called me and told me to go to the police station because it was too dangerous to stay at home. From the look of things, I'd say she was probably right. But it's dangerous here as well. You'd better come with me. But there's something out there. I don't know what it is, but I saw it. Much larger than any of those zombies. And it's coming after me. What was that? That's what I was <laughs> telling you about. The cry of time. <laughs> Sherry, wait. Uh, yeah, definitely, uh, Mr. Mr. Gaming. You, uh, if you get a chance to play the originals, even, I mean, sometimes getting the old emulators to, to run properly and smoothly requires a lot of optimization depending on the system you're playing them on they can sometimes be quite uh, graphics or hardware intense uh, even to run those old games uh, but there, there are quite a few tutorials online on how to get certain games running or like the most optimum settings to to make the majority of, of those games work hey where'd he go and where did he take the the mayor's daughter <laughs> He did say he was a taxidermist. Is he gonna stuff it? <laughs> There's a button below the picture. Will you push it? So, like Leon had the um, like the uh, the chessboard plugs. This is Claire's version, where she collects these uh, stones. And of course, you know, Leon only needed the three plugs. But Claire needs the three stones, but the last one's broken in two. <laughs> Typical. Uh, yo, Gary, everything about playing Resident Evil 7? Uh, Biohazard. I mean, I finished by Resident Evil 7. Resident Evil 7 is the only Resident Evil game that I finished once. Actually, I'll tell a lie. Resident Evil 0 and Resident Evil 7, I've finished both of them once. And I've got no inclination, no urge to replay them ever again. I, mean, I sat with Ian through the whole of the Resident Evil 7... Uh, Resident Evil 7 game on the stream and that was good enough for me because I, I really didn't want to play it again I was I was kind of done with that game uh, I never felt the urge to, to revisit it Don't get me wrong. I, th I thought Resident Evil 7 was a great game um, it just uh, It just wasn't Resident Evil for me even though it had lots of things about it that made it Resident Evil if, if that makes sense I, uh, you know, as time's moving on, I, I still prefer the this original Resident Evil game and uh, Resident Evil One, Two, and Three originals. I'm sneaking around here because I'm like, there's a liquor. I'm sure there's a liquor up here. I'm like, I'm also trying to remember where I need to go. <laughs> um. Oh, I think I do. I think it's downstairs and to the right. I think I don't. I don't think I needed to come down this way. I think I could have gone down where the crows were. I think that's the doorway I need to open. No, no, that's the wrong wrong way as well. Okay, so it's time to bring up the map. Nope, that's the files. So everything down here is unlocked. Oh, it's is it that one? It might be that one. Uh, you have to finish Resident Evil 3 first and then you'll play the originals. Uh, looking at this one now, it looks super interesting. Yeah, this this one's great. Uh, and I, I love the A, B scenarios. The A scenarios for both characters is a little bit easier than the B scenarios. And some of the choices that you make do affect your next playthrough. Oh, crap. That was an acid round. What a waste. Not for a zombie. Oh, why aim up when you can't shoot them in the head? <laughs> always bugs me when the chief is just like just takes a single bullet to the head or decapitation I'm like but well, where's the decap gun and how do you shoot the zombies in the head because it ain't working turn around Claire it's behind you case of auto aim not helping here I think it's this door I open it is and it's the last one for this key great Uh, yeah, there is a Netflix movie coming for Resident Evil. I believe there is. Like, oh, damn it! 
I believe that there were at least at some point two Resident Evil projects on the go. Well, no. Um, but I can't confirm if they're all still in production or not. And I don't know if they were independent of each other. I know Sony Pictures, I think, still owns the rights to make Resident Evil movies. But I think the license to make Resident Evil content of any kind is kind of up for grabs. So I think Netflix might be working on the movies. And I think Sony, or my, on a series where Sony are working on movies. Like, I, it's, it, I, it's a little bit rumory. I think there's some, some official press releases out there for it. But uh, there's no real details as to what it's going to be. Like, one of the rumors I heard that it was going to follow Wesker's daughter. It's like, really? Like, at least in the games he had a son. I don't remember him having a daughter. <laughs> Can't get in there yet, but is there? There is. There's always something just hiding. Like, it's not really there. You can't see it. It's just hiding. I'm trying to remember. Oh, is this, is this the dog air? Oh, wow. I've got four pistol rounds left. Four grenades left. Oh, shit. Well, that was the end of the pistol rounds. Four grenades. That should be enough. I just hope we find some more ammo before we come back this way. <laughs> Uh, movie ideas sound interesting. I hope they get it right this time. Yeah, I really do like The way I would actually structure it. I would maybe I would do what I think they were intending to do with the uh, with the Dark Tower series at one point and that would be to have a series of movies intercut with uh, a TV series like in between the movies I Don't know. I don't know how, how they would work, but there's there's so much You know material to work with in Resident Evil That ink ribbon in the typewriter, it's just mocking me. Wow. I thought there might be some supplies of something in here, but there's actually nothing in here. Oh. Sherry, I've been looking everywhere for you. I was so worried. We've got to go now, honey, okay? If we stay here, that monster will find us. Let's go. No, I won't. What's the matter? <laughs> Don't you trust me? It's not that, Claire. It's because of my daddy. He's over there. I heard him call my name. Daddy must have been attacked by the monsters. I have to help him. Sherry, wait! Wait, Sherry. Don't go alone. Sherry! Sherry! <laughs> Sherry! Sherry! Ugh. It's one of the worst parts of the uh, of this game. Like, doing the Ada bit's not a problem, but I just hate playing as Sherry. <laughs> and I love how she's completely able... I just run past these zombies. I can say that now that I've run past them. <laughs> just didn't run right into them. So the puzzle's the same here as it would be for Ada. Just come jump down here and uh, push the crates around. Except it just takes three times longer because she's a she's a small child. It takes her forever to do anything, especially climbing. Uh, Jensen Ackles would be a good choice for for Leon in Resident Evil. Yeah, you know Jensen Ackles, that'd be great. He'd be great for uh, to play Leon in the games, uh, in the in the movies. Sorry. Especially now that uh, Supernatural is coming to its ultimate conclusion after fifteen years. Oh, 
Come on, Sherry. You can do it. You can do it. Climb up. I always hold forward during these sections because I swear that if you just press A and just ask her to climb up, she'll she sometimes falls right back down again. Sherry doesn't seem scared of the zombies at all. No, she's it's just an inconvenience for her. <laughs> but because she's so short, you know, she's a child, I don't actually think the zombies um I don't actually think the zombies grab her. I think they just uh, try and spit acid on her. 15 years, yeah. Jensen Ackles now. I don't know how old he is. I'm guessing he's going to be in his maybe late 30s. Although, you know, he, he looks as good now as he did from the first, the first season of that show. Uh, the actor who plays his brother, though, he definitely is definitely changed over the 15 years. Grenade rounds. I know who could use those. <laughs> yeah, when your parents are William and Annette Birkin, I guess. Yeah. Everything's just so trivial after, after having them as your parents. <laughs> Children are very hard to grab. <laughs> Every time you try and snag one at the playground, it's difficult. <laughs> you know you've just been placed on every possible watch list now. <laughs> Sherry, are you okay? Did you find your dad? He's 42. Yes, oh my I'm god. Okay, but I couldn't find him. But I did find something else for you. Here. Here's another. Yeah, no zombie children in the orphanage remake. No zombie children. No children. Thanks, almost. Sweetie. Period. In Why horror games. Come over here? I want you to stay it's a big no-no. Claire, I can't reach the ventilation hole anymore. But don't worry, I'll find. Yeah, I still love Supernatural. Can't wait for the the, the second half of season fifteen. Wait, Sherry, come back. Sherry, Sherry. have access to the back of the parking lot. Got it. I'm getting out of here and heading to the sewer. Can you meet me? Try not to get shot, Leon. I'm on my way. I don't think he heard me. <laughs> so there's the club key. So that that's the door that was by the interrogation office back in the police station. Still no pistol ammo, but got some grenades. Yeah, we'll go up the ladder. Yeah, and uh, I guess there are dead mutant children in uh, in Dead Space, but yeah, um, it's 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 mostly a big no-no for most developers because I think the uh, I think they get, you know, the uh, is it the MPAA sticker, the um, the gaming version of it, the ESRB. I'd just be like, oh, it's too horrific for children to buy or play. Sorry, zombie. I know you were just chilling out there, just staring in the autopsy room. But you were in my way. Again, I was just like, this room's empty, but <laughs> I can hear something. Oh. Where are you then? Come on. Hey, show yourself. Shit, there's another one. Acid rounds is the way. Acid rounds, single acid round shot deals with them quite nicely. Uh, Gary, how'd you enjoy Supernatural the first couple of seasons? Um, I, I, I love the first few seasons. Uh, the first five seasons of Supernatural are, are I think are the best. Uh, but there's been some standout episodes, you know, over the years. The, uh, the Scooby-Doo episode, oh, I absolutely loved it. Like, one of my favourite episodes of television ever. And being a fan of Supernatural, then, yeah, it was it was perfect. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, you know, loved Crowley, loved Castiel, you know, some of the supporting characters, loved Bobby, like, when, you know, spoilers, <laughs> when, when Bobby went, oh man, that got me in the feels. That's a map. I don't need the map. I think some of my other favourite episodes of Supernatural were the, um, they did the Groundhog Day type thing. Uh, they also did the, um, uh, it was an episode, oh, wrong, that's, that's wrong, I think. They did the, uh, oh, that still works. The, uh, there was one where it, uh, the TV show was a, like a reality TV show. So it had canned laughter and everything. Yeah, all the Gabriel episodes are the best, Dan. Yeah, absolutely right. They really, really were. They kind of did like one episode a season with Gabriel just, you know, causing havoc for them. Yeah, I know a fair few people fell out of Supernatural between series 5 and 10. Um, but and, and that was because the main showrunner uh, left the left the show after season 5. Like, he, you know, he was done. He told the story he wanted to. Uh, he went off and made a bunch of movies, but then I think he came back uh, at some point as well. The humour in it is so great, yeah. The the banter between Sam and Dean, or Dean and Crowley, or... Yeah, there's just so many great interactions and comical moments. Um, so, do I go and grab the machine gun? I need that machine gun, but do I need it now? I think I'll grab it on the way back. Because I haven't got space for it right now. Um, yeah, that'll do. That'll do for now. Uh, yes, also the episodes where the Winchesters had to hold down an area from demons. Yeah. There's just so many great moments. And of course, with it being, what, like 15 seasons worth, it's, it comes hard to place which episodes, which season. You know, you can usually theme it and go, right, those two seasons were dedicated to that great big bad. You know, that season was dedicated to that big bad. Uh, J Jared Padalecki, he's not, he's not the greatest actor in the world. Me and uh, Dan have discussed it many times. He, he has about three facial expressions throughout the whole 15 years. <laughs> I'm sure if you were to Google him, like, you'd just see the same three facial expressions. But, you know, it works for the show. <laughs> one dead doggy. Oh shit, reloaded. Panic, panic. <laughs> I probably shouldn't close my eyes when I panic. <laughs> I've only got one life. If I remember what's in this door and what's to the left of me. Yeah, he didn't do much for the Friday the 13th remake, no. <laughs> oh, fuck. Do you like ducks? I like ducks. Not when they jump at my face! Bad doggo! Bad doggo! Fuck! I think I've just... Oh dear, oh dear. At least I'm still fine, still fine. Did I shoot him? Yeah, that's that. Sorry, doggos. Nothing in there? That's a shame. I'm running low on that pistol ammo again. I think I'm getting to the point in the game, though, where I'm not going to use it too much at all. Is there anything down here? No, that's just where Ben Ben got split in two by the, uh, the parasite that Birkin dropped in him. 
So I've got the crank, which is the only reason why I really needed to come down this way. I need a rolled up newspaper to fight the dogs. <laughs> that dog! <laughs> if I gave them the newspaper though, I'm sure that would keep them occupied. You know, I used to, when, when I lived back with my mum, with my brother, you know, as growing up, we used to have a Yorkshire Terrier. And every time anything came through the post box, that dog would just be on it. <laughs> Tear it to shreds. <laughs> um, I need... I need a save there. I need a storage box. Storage box was down this... Oh, dear. Okay, a little bit of backtracking. Uh, Gary, any chance of reviewing the CGI Resident Evil films with Ian? Uh, there's a chance, yeah. No, oh, goddamn dogs. Uh, I did actually, um, I did actually make, um, uh, you know, uh, digital copies of the uh, of the DVDs <clears throat> to to review them when we were doing all the Resident Evil stuff. But you know, we'll, after we'd finished all the Resident Evil movie reviews, we're just a little bit burnt out on Resident Evil, and because of the quality of those movies, dropped off so quickly. It was just like. I would just go into those Resident Evil animated movies in a bad frame of mind. It's like, no, we're not, we're not doing them just yet. We'll, we'll give them a break. Do I have any spare green, just floating green herbs? No. I'm gonna have to take one. I don't, I don't know why I'm doing. I'm just swapping one full heal for another full heal. Don't, don't also need to use it yet. I'm umming and ahhing. Because <laughs> I know I've got to run past these dogs again as well. Hey TJ. Yay, Mr. Gary is back on. I did promise that I'll at least try and stream every Friday to replace Gaming Fridays for now. Ah. Ah. Ian, how do you like Code Veronica? I don't know if Ian's still in the chat. He was uh, he was doing this handyman, husbandly duties, fixing stuff around the house last time he checked in. But I know Ian really doesn't like Code Veronica. It's it's not, you know, for me Code Veronica, Resident Evil Code Veronica is the Silent Hill for the room of the series. You know. <laughs> wasn't made by the best team. It's a little bit odd, a little bit weird. I had to undergo some changes because of the restructuring at Capcom. Uh, so yeah. Ambivalent Rona says, Gary, have I played Call of Cthulhu? I have. I finished it. I, I was playing it around Christmas time. <laughs> and uh, as, I, as I may have mentioned, Jez and I have been reviewing uh, a few more Lovecraftian movies lately and so... One of these Gaming Friday streams will be a Resident Evil, uh, a Call of Cthulhu playthrough. So I'm out of pistol rounds, so it's going to have to be grenades. What's it with zombies surviving grenade shots these days? There's so many. I can't even see. Fire and blind. It just feels like such a tragic waste to use all these grenades. Especially when they survive! God damn! I've never known zombies to take so many grenade rounds before. <laughs> That's quite frightening. Um, off the show for views, I'm sorry for asking, sorry I'm new. What other games do you play on this channel? Um, at the moment, I have live streamed myself probably only Resident Evil games. I don't think I've streamed anything else. Um, I usually only stream, we, me and Ian only used to stream like once a year on the channel um, until I gave Ian the Elgato so that he could live stream all of his Red Dead Redemptions or his Red Head Adventures. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm fairly new to streaming myself. I, it, it, like some people like Ian will sit down and stream and it's natural. You know, Ian has, has the gift of the gab. You know, try and stop Ian from speaking. Try and get Ian to be quiet for five minutes. It don't happen. It doesn't happen. If Ian goes quiet for five minutes, something's really, really wrong. <laughs> uh, whereas I, I don't quite feel 
like I'm a natural at uh, at streaming, but you know I'm getting used to it. I'm getting there. I'm trying to. I'm doing what I can. <laughs> so for me, I'm just I'm just going to treat it as just trying as just chilling out, playing the games that I'd want to play, and uh, and getting to hang out with you guys is kind of the best thing about it, really. Kerry Louise says you're going to have to love you and leave your work calling. Uh, yeah, take it easy, Kerry. Thanks for dropping by. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out which way I need to go, and it's back up into the... Do I have the... Yeah, I still have the crank. Cheers, Sam. Chill. I'm just, yeah, I'm just going to treat it as a chance to just chill out and uh, and just play the games. Um, the best thing I can... Do... Oh, fuck me. <laughs> Straight into a liquor. Uh, the best thing I can do is just uh, play the games at my own pace, really. I'm I'm also injured. I really, I don't like facing liquors when I'm at caution state. I'm also adding extra stress to myself on this stream, unnecessarily so, by doing a no save playthrough. <laughs> Cheers, Mister Mister Gaming. You, I'm glad you think I'm a natural. Like inside, I'm just like, <sighs> what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> I don't have a script. You know, even though none of Off the Shelves is, is never scripted. That's one thing we've always stayed away from. Is that we just put the camera on and it's just like, right, what do you got to say about that? <laughs> the, uh, it's the wonders and the magic of editing that uh, brings the reviews together. Ian's always been like, well, well, you know, we get complications with the uh, the YouTube kind of bots taking the videos down. Let's just upload the videos without film footage. I'm like, no, no, the horror, <laughs> the fluffs, the mistakes, the, you know, there's plenty of them still in the videos as there are, but <laughs> it's the magic of editing that brings it together. Oh, wait, I don't need to go up here yet, do I? I need to go and use that club key. Now I remember. The only time when Ian doesn't talk is when Ian Mark II is talking. <laughs> Dylan, yeah. I thought it was strange. I was listening in on the uh, the Alien Trilogy stream yesterday. And I was like, why is it that Dylan is louder than Ian? And Ian is closer to the microphone. <laughs> Matt Midgley says, that's why you like it. Because it's not scripted with added jokes. Yeah. Yeah, like, our, so occasionally me and Ian are like, oh, I've got this idea for a joke. Can we work it in? And then we'll do the whole video and I'll, I'll switch all the camera and recording equipment off and we'll be like, oh, we didn't do your joke. That's because it wasn't natural. It didn't it didn't flow. It didn't fit into the to the conversation. So it's not there. You know, I was I was shooting myself, you know, yesterday when I was editing, um, editing uh, one of the more recent reviews that will be going up. And I was like, I downloaded this film footage and this film footage. I put it in the folder before recording. So I was like, I'll definitely mention those things. To contrast to this thing you know it's an hour long video and I just I didn't even mention those things it's like well I guess I'll just delete those videos out of <laughs> out of the folder I don't need them anymore it's only been a, a few times ever that I've had to go and record supplementary bits for the review because I got something so seriously wrong or it just needed uh, needed to be corrected you know you try and avoid those comments in the comments section which point out all the uh, the things that you got wrong in a video like somebody the other day left a comment on maximum overdrive and he was like I can't watch any more of this video you got the date that the year uh, that the film released completely wrong so you get a dislike and an, and I'm out I'm just like, okay yeah thanks for dropping by for like 10 seconds I guess <laughs> All right, now I've also just remembered, I think I need the lighter to go in there to solve the puzzle, so we're backtracking again. Where's the nearest storage box? Dylan is Ian Mark II, yep. Yeah, he's going to grow up to be just like Ian, I think, which is great. <laughs> More Ian in the world. said yeah you binge watch your reviews during these times if you're having rough days you guys are the best don't know how I'd get by without off the shelf reviews ah oh, bless you Erican. that's really nice to hear 
It, it, we've re me and Ian have received some amazing compliments over the years, uh, especially from people that have, you know, uh, solitary jobs uh, or work late shifts or, you know, work in an office and time drags. And if you can put on, if you're allowed to at least put on one of our podcasts or one of our film reviews in the background, then, uh, then, then that's amazing. That's what I used to do as well. Uh, I used to listen to uh, Double Toasted uh, or Spill.com's podcasts and a fair few others. And, uh, you know, they helped me get by, like, really long, tedious days. Uh, so I'm kind of glad that you choose us. Uh, boss says, uh, well, Gary, those are the most important things to get right when reviewing a film. They, they, they are, like the film, <laughs> film the, the date that the film was released. Yeah. I'm just like, did I pick up the light? Which way am I going? I'm trying. I'm trying to read the chat and stay focused at the same time, and that that's one of the that's one of the the skills that Ian has, and why I'd say he's a natural gamer is because he can juggle the chat, juggle his inner voice, keep a conversation, and play the game at the same time. Whereas my brain sometimes goes, what? What, what are you doing? Like, you're vaping. You're drinking coffee. You're playing a game. You're chatting. What are you, What are you doing? Where did you need to go? And my brain starts to dribble out of my nose. <laughs> so here is a puzzle, so use the lighter. CTO says you can't remember when you discovered off the shelf, but you're glad you did. That's all I'm glad you did too. I do that all the time. I like podcast type videos that you can watch and or listen to while playing or working. In my case, I play a lot of Animal Crossing. <laughs> oh shit! Fuck, fuck, fuck! I forgot, I forgot! Um, yeah, like when I, I know the wheel is missing, it's on the floor, you daft bin! Pick it up! <laughs> uh, like when I was doing the uh, the second draft of the, uh, the film review yesterday, uh, aspect ratioing it. Uh, doing the uh, the the transitions and the text and the and all the other bits and pieces, I I put EFAP on in the background because they're like eight to twelve hour podcasts. Oh fuck! Fuckity fuck fuck fuck! Um, I can't even see me. I don't know how injured I am. Um, he's hit me once. Maybe I can get past him now. Nope. Do the yeah. He's doing the big two handed drop down. Ooh. Boss says uh, he actually listened to a couple of our horror reviews last night while on Graveyard Patrol. Enhanced the experience. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so, uh, lol, so you, me on this channel, or subscribe now. <laughs> I also love to see a cool community in the chat. Yeah, that, that's one of the main things. I said to Ian the other day, I was just like, you know, even if we don't get to interact too much with the chat because we're too busy doing, you know, playing the game or whatever, I'm like, it's a great platform for our community to uh, to hang out and chat to each other. And you guys are amazing at that. Uh, I love, I love our community. You, you guys are amazing. You know, we've we've had a couple of ass hats in the past, but you know, we've got some great moderators that just get rid of those comments. Mister X doesn't use doors. No, not like the remake. At least he's uh. Oh, actually, I think I know when I'll see him again. I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> Come on, Claire. you got a three-hour time limit. We want that A rate. That A rank. No more mistakes. Uh, but I think uh, Mr. X is... Because I remember in the, uh, in the remake, he comes after you just before you do the puzzle to leave the police station. And I think... I think he's here as well. Can I pick up that red herb? Maybe. I should... Hopefully I don't. Yeah, because I'll use up that gold cog up here. Uh, rumpled foreskin. <laughs> hey, Gary. <laughs> There's a foreskin talking to me. <laughs> and it's rumpled. <laughs> no, so Mr. X doesn't jump me here. I think he come, jumps me when I come back because... I guess I guess this is where I get the uh, the other blue stone. 
I think it's the leopard stone. I think I did the eagle stone already. Here we go. Uh, Call of Cthulhu was mentioned. The pen and paper. No, it was the. Um, it was the, uh, the the latest game that came out. It came out on consoles and on PC. It's the first person. Um, first person. I'd. I'd say um, kind of point and click horror. There's not much survival horror to it. Not like the. Uh, not like the uh, the Call of Cthulhu Dark Corners of the Earth, which had a lot more gunplay, and I guess a lot more survival horror moments with first aid kits and limbs being broken and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, Claire never radios Leon about Mr. X. Never, just wanted to surprise him. But I think she knows that Mr. X is only after her for some reason because Leon never saw him once. Is he here? Here he is. Fuck! 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 Any fuck! Fuck, fuck, buggity fuck! Um, what ammo do I have left? Oh, shit, I got plenty of acid rounds. One, two, three, four? Four enough? Four was enough. <laughs> Whew. And what's he got for me today? Grenade rounds, lovely. Uh, so, yeah, I haven't streamed too many other games other than Resident Evil, but, uh, uh, I know there was um, a call out to play uh, maybe Dead Space next, uh, so I could do it. Could be doing a Dead Space playthrough soon. I haven't played Dead Space since its original release. It's been quite a while. Uh, the last time I played it through, I managed to complete Dead Space on its harder setting with the, with only three saves and under part time, and managed to get the uh, the pew pew weapon. Which was just a one-hit kill on every monster and every boss in the game, which was a glorious final playthrough of that game. <laughs> uh, no worries, Erican. Uh, you blow up the, the message board as much as you want. <laughs> uh, so I don't need the lighter anytime soon. I need need you. Let's put those away and get that. Was there a loose green herb? Did I have one in here? Did I see one? Nope. Oh well. Let's put you away and we'll take you. Yeah. We need to put that away. Dead Space was a great game. Seriously scary. Yeah, it was. Like, when I, when I was first playing Dead Space, that was the most intensely scary game I'd ever played at that point. Like, it may, maybe it still is. Like, I've not had another game that's, you know, consistently made me feel uneasy about the next room. You know, you don't know what nightmarish or freakish abomination is going to throw itself at you next. Yeah. The sounds it makes. And the fact that you could, an accidental shot okay? could blow you and every creature in the level out an airlock. Yeah, boss, your favourite review is the Predator review. <laughs> Yeah, I suffered through that one. Fuck me, I suffered through that one. <laughs> uh, I've been looking up for the review of Street Trash about six months ago. And that's when you came across the channel. Awesome. An elevator. Claire. I'm going down there. Stay here and wait for me, okay? So yeah, I think my my my, my plan is. Is to play through Dead Space 1, then do Dead Space 2, and then Daniel Allen there, who's in the chat, is going to join me for uh, a Dead Space 3 playthrough. Because I never got to play Dead Space 3 through as the other guy. I've forgotten his name right now. Carver? I think it's Carver. I might be wrong. <laughs> Seed Hill, you love... I love Gary's baffled face when Ian says something he disagrees with. It's like, what the fuck? What are you smoking, Ian? <laughs> How did you get to that conclusion? So you made it this far. Oh. Not bad, girl. I'm not letting anyone leave my town. Everyone's gonna die. Calm down, Chief. What happened? Shut up. You couldn't possibly understand what's happened. 
those monsters from Umbrella have destroyed my beautiful town. How could they do that to me after everything I've done for them? So it's true. You have been working with Umbrella. Then you must know about the G-Virus. What is it? Tell me! If you must know, it's the agent that can turn humans into the ultimate bio weapons. Superior to the T-Virus in every way. Dr. William Birkin is the genius behind the project. William Birkin? I'm sure you've already seen this little girl running around here somewhere. Sharon. In case you haven't already figured it out, the monster that's been tearing my eyes apart is yet another product of the G virus. An ultimate bio weapon. Umbrella must be trying to cover its tracks. But if I have to go, I'm going to take you with me. It's a shame we don't get to see him die. He has a glorious death in the remake. <laughs> Glad that piece of shit got what was coming to him. Uh, anything in here? Yep, some, uh, some acid rounds, my fave. Acid rounds tend to do the most damage to most of the creatures. <clears throat> anything else in here? No, I don't think there's anything else. Way! <laughs> I remember that making me jump a few times. Yeah, let's go down there. Let's find out what happened to his legs. <laughs> Boss, you remember my face when during that podcast? Oh my god. I literally spaced out for like a whole hour. <laughs> While Ian was describing Metal Gear Solid, the lore to me. My god. I'm so so glad I didn't have to sit an exam afterwards. <laughs> Okay. Okie dokie. Can... Calm down, Birkin. Like, like, you just killed Chief Irons, like, <laughs> can we just call it a draw? Let's go for the gun. Let's go for the big gun. No, you fuck. Get up. Get up, Claire. Get up. Oh my god. Oh my god. I panicked then. I thought I was I thought I was dead. Don't stop shooting till he dies, Claire. Fuck me, he's still going. Fuck me, he's still going. Oh fuck me, he's still going. Is he still going? He had enough? Yeah, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> I thought I was dead then. Gary, I never in my life played Metal Gear Solid. How is it? Um, I love the original game. That's the only one. I, I completed the first and the second one. I tried playing one of the one of the later Metal Gear Solid games and I didn't have a fucking clue what was going on. I was just like, yeah, the gameplay's all fine in that, but there was like... A two-hour cutscene, <laughs> and when that cutscene was over, I was just like, "I don't want to play anymore. I just want to keep watching cutscenes now." So, so I, I guess I'm done. Well, I'm done with Metal Gear. Andrew Hunt, yeah, rest in peace, the voice actor for Resident Evil 2, Leon. I was, I was really, really gutted last Friday because I streamed Resident Evil 2, and I know a few people mentioned it in the chat. In, in the in the feed, but I, I didn't even notice it until the comments came up on the video after it was published saying that Paul Haddad had passed away the you know the night before. I was just like, oh my god, I was absolutely devastated. Because I, I even said in that video, I'm like, Leon is my favorite Resident Evil character. And so when I found out of his passing, yeah, I was quite affected. You know, I mean, we all go at some, some point, you know, none, none of us are going to live forever, but... It's still, it's a little bit tragic because that the, that dude had a rough time in his life. You know, he he battled throat cancer but never told anybody about it. He had numerous 
uh, tumors and, and operations and um, and yeah eventually it claimed him so yeah it's really sad really sad <clears throat> Hey Ian, welcome back. I'm doing so far so good Ian. I haven't saved it yet. I haven't died yet. <laughs> I guess the, the discussion of Metal Gear brought you back Ian. Look away Sherry. Close your eyes baby. <laughs> Uh, Sony says, how about playing uh, Res uh, uh, Alien Isolation? Um, I've, I've already got a complete playthrough of Alien Isolation on the channel, a complete playthrough. Um, and I think Ian has my physical copy of the game. And I'd also need to get the Elgato back from him to play it. So if you want an Alien Isolation review, you should, you should bug Ian. Like, message him every day on Discord until he does it. Just saying. <laughs> Come on, Sherry. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh my god. I just dealt with Birkin and now Mr. X is on the case. Back in the sewers. Hey, Sherry! Sherry, wait! Where are you? Sherry! Now we've, we're past the Sherry part, Ian. We've already played a Sherry. Uh, a Soulsborne game, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I mentioned it to uh, to Dan as well, and uh, Dan and I are looking at doing um, a couple of Dark Souls playthroughs for the channel at some point as well. Ugh, first aid spray. Don't want to touch that. Um, I don't think I need that rifle for a little while. I do need the lighter, and I'm going to need... There it is. The valve handle. And maybe I should take some healing with me just in case I'm, I need it. Uh, which way is it? Which way is it? Use the lockpick. Yeah. There's a couple of storage cabinets around here somewhere. I want to stock up on uh, grenade launcher ammo of any kind. Yeah, Dan, you might need to carry me through the uh, the Dark Souls streams. I'll probably be really distracted. <laughs> let's uh, let's get the grenade launcher out. Uh. Oh fuck! <sighs> the, what is it with zombies taking multiple grenade shots? I feel like the game is cheating. <laughs> ah, yeah, I see some grenades up there. Yeah, that was it down here. Yeah. Is this an area that Sherry comes into in the A playthrough, maybe? Wow. Oh, really loud dripping tap. There's a doorway there. Where does that go? I don't, I don't think I need to go through that doorway. Yeah, the only From Software game I haven't really played is the... Um, uh, is is uh, Sekiro? I've not played it yet. I'm trying to remember which way it is I need to go. I think down here is where we find Leon. <laughs> Wendy, is it your birthday? Well, what happy birthday to you. I, happy I birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear I mean, Wendy. Ava. Happy birthday! Right after that, to you. Someone tried to kill me. 
I don't have the best singing voice. <laughs> I've said it before. <laughs> I used to do a lot of acting work. Uh, well, not work. I, I performed in a lot of plays. Um, and then uh, most of the auditions, like 85% of them, I failed on the singing part. <laughs> Dance, performance, voice, all fine. But as soon as they wanted me to sing something, I'm like, yeah, I'll just, I know where the door is. <laughs> Ooh, lots of supplies. I need those herbs. Oh, three herbs. How generous. How very generous. No more singing suggestions, please, Ian. No more. <laughs> Gary had visions of Marilyn Monroe when you were seeing that. <laughs> I'll just go get my white dress. <laughs> I did just order a new fan, actually. <laughs> Let's go down the ladder. <laughs> Your boyfriend got you some Freddy Krueger shoes. <laughs> awesome. Should be Freddy Krueger gloves? <laughs> what, what shoes does Freddy Krueger wear? More grenades. I'm just waiting for that unexpected zombie. Nope. Flame rounds. Yay. Okay, lots of ammo. <laughs> yeah, I'll do, I'll do the next film review entirely in rap, or in the or under the style of Children of Bodom. I'm pretty sure you won't have a clue what I'm saying. <laughs> Is it back down this way now. Freddy's shoes have the best soles, Ian. <laughs> Such a terrible dad joke. <laughs> hey Leon, just Leon, wait! And he actually will. <laughs> you want a musical review now? I did actually watch a musical last night. It really, the coincidence surprised me last night when, uh, after Ian finished streaming, I I, I played some um, played some tabletop, uh, some virtual tabletop simulator, and then when that was done, I was like, I'm not quite tired yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna put something on to watch and. Uh, I watched the movie yesterday, which was the, um, it's a movie about a, a musician, a struggling musician who, oh fuck the spiders, who gets hit by a bus and he wakes up kind of in, al in an alternate dimension where no one's ever heard of the Beatles. And so he passes off all the Beatles songs as his own. And so for me, it was great just to, you know, re-experience re listening to the Beatles again. Love, big fan of the Beatles, my dad was. Uh, so that was just great to listen to. But then when I came off, after the film finished, I came to the Discord and it was just like, hey look, there's this Beatles thing going on on, on YouTube. It's like, a weird coincidence. Oh fuck. I'm poisoned and there's spiders all over me. Please don't get me, please don't get me. <laughs> Yeah, struggling musician who fucked right? the spiders. <laughs> Get away from me. You just want my husband's key sent, don't you? But no one will take that away from me. No one. Husband? <laughs> then you must be in there. Huh? How did you? We don't have time for that. Sherry is lost somewhere in the sewer system. I have to find her. What? I told her to go to the police building. Why is she here? Now Sherry and the Keys Apple are both in danger. Uh. 
What did she mean Those by blue that? herbs right back there. Does Sherry have the cheese sample? Oh fuck. Oh fuck. I'm in danger already. Uh, Alright. Even though the her blue herbs are right there, I'm just like, no. <laughs> Please don't die. Wow. It put me straight back into caution as well after a fall here. I'm glad you're enjoying um, uh, David's Final Fantasy VII uh, stream, Matt. I know, I mean, it's understandable that there's not that many uh, viewers on there uh, when he's streaming. I know, I know a lot of people come to the channel for me and Ian. Uh, but, you know, uh, David's been there with us pretty much from the beginning with some of the earliest reviews. He joins us on the podcast a lot and we'd really like to, you know, help help him uh, get, get his audience on, on the channel as well. So I'm... Um, Appreciate your support, Matt, on uh, on turning up on all of his streams. <laughs> uh, Matthew Dubas says, Gary, you and Ian should do voiceovers for all these cutscenes. Oh, how could you replace these glorious, glorious voice actors? <laughs> That's part of the charm of the, uh, the first Resident Evil games is the awful, awful voice acting. I, I wouldn't say it was necessarily the voice acting, but, you know, the, the script. It's... That's what makes the classics. Yeah, the spiders, you forgot how big they are. Yeah, I remember when I just did the Leon A playthrough, those spiders, uh, they freaked me out especially so because I'd just had a nightmare about spiders the night before. Well, we know Leon took care of the, the, uh, the croc down here, so should be able to run through here no problem. Dave streams very early in the morning for you. Yeah, D Dave's uh, Dave works odd hours, so his streams are, are a little bit different to to I Ian's and, and my regular streaming times. I pronounce your name right. Woo -hoo! <laughs> Sometimes I won't. Sometimes I'll see a name. You know, I, I look at it at a glance and then I'm back to the screen again. So sometimes I'll muffle it or mispronounce it or get it extremely wrong. Do I have the space for that? Yeah, I do. Well, we're heading, I think, well, we're definitely past the midpoint of the game now. Oh. Not thinking right. <laughs> Slow delay there, Claire. I'm going to run past the bugs. It's another freaky moment. An explosion of cockroaches. There. Josh, you're having a Stella now with a smooth outcome. Very nice. I'm not a big fan of the drink, Stella. It made me not a fun drunk. <laughs> Some beers turn me into. I gotta get a bit arsy when I have certain beers. Uh, yeah, you, you might know Justine from the um, Under the Skin review. She joined us for a fair few reviews. I think she, the last one she did with us was Fight Club. Um, we would have had her in now for uh, for another review if it wasn't for the, for the lockdown. We would have recorded it over the Easter break. It would be a shame if the emulator crashed. It really would. <laughs> I've made all this progress. But no, it seems to be pretty stable. It never didn't conk out on the Leon A playthrough, so. Yeah, I love The Witcher, Andrew. Big fan of The Witcher. All three games, and the TV series, and the books. Uh, Erican says, Gary and Ian, will you ever review Street Fighter 2, the animated movie? Um, it's not on the cards. Um, I, I, I'd never say no, I'd never say no to it, but uh, obviously we okay. prioritize the um, 
the Patreon requests, and right now I'm enjoying, enjoying working on uh, Lovecraft adaptations uh, until things get back to normal. Either a vial or a test tube. G virus? I've never heard of anything like that before. Coming up to the two hour mark, am I in? Yeah, I've got about an hour left if I want to get this A this A grade. But I really don't have anything. It's the truth. Take it easy, Ian. I still, might still be here when you get back. <laughs> it all depends. A weapon box key. I'll take it. Come on, Sherry. So I'm just trying to think what's to come up. I think there's the the Birkin boss fight on the train. Oh shit! It's on. Oh wait, what ammo am I using? The correct type. Oh shit! I'm trying to remember this. I mean, it's a very linear area. I think I think around here is where she gets the is the, the spark gun. Oh, crap. Hey, I got a twofer. Uh, which way is it? I think it's this way. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we definitely don't need the spark gun. I mean, just like the machine gun, it takes up two infantry spaces. I don't think you get too much ammo. It might be 100% just like the machine gun, but it's too much extra space. Sherry, wait here. I'm going to check it out by myself. Okay, I'll wait here, but hurry back. Hurry back. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. All these grenades. Alright, I think I can stash a few things away that I don't need. Uh, I don't need that key. I don't need the valve. Don't think I need the lighter. What I do think I'm going to need is my healing items. That should just about do it. Four healing items and a lot of grenades. I should be fine. <laughs> I'm ignoring the first aid spray. Um, you're a master at those controls, bro. <laughs> Tears, Sam. Uh, is it really hard to get used to tank controls? If you're, if you are, if if tank controls are alien to you, then yeah, it can it can take a little while to get used to. But I I grew up playing, you know, Tomb Raider as tank controls, Resident Evil as tank control, Silent Hill as tank controls. Uh, I think the more games you play, the easier the easier it gets for you. Will you turn the monitor on? Yeah, let's have a look. See what's going on out there. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. That looks like the gangway I just came down. Yeah, it does. If you're familiar with tank controls, it does come back to you very, relatively quickly. Where is he? He's there. Okay. Um, wrong type of ammo. I want acid on this. Yeah. Let's get around that corner. Ow. And again. And again. One more. That should be enough. Whew. Oh, he's got more acid rounds. Let's swap them out so then I can pick them up. It doesn't go straight into the gun for some reason. Um, and if I think it's the boss I'm thinking of, I think flame rounds might be a better, might be better to take Birkin down. <laughs> Quick, change the channel. <laughs> nice one, ambivalent. Yeah. Oh, Street Fighter the movie reference. 
changing the channel will stop it from actually being real. Romero's original zombie trilogy never gets old. Nope, never. Easily, at any point in time, watch one of those three zombie movies. Of course, Land of the Dead onwards, yeah, you're just asking for trouble. The fact that this game still keeps you on edge says it all. It really does. Let's I, go. I know. I think I know what boss is coming up, and it's it's a lot harder than the uh, the A playthrough. So I think this version of Birkin is the next evolution up again. Come on, Sherry. We gotta go. If you if you run too far ahead, she just kind of sits on the floor and waits for you to run back to her. Ugh. You didn't you didn't need to do that when you were running around on your own, but as soon as you're with Claire, she's like, Oh you're too far away from me, so I'm just gonna sit here now. Complete time waster. It seems like the remake of this game did stay pretty close to the original. It did. Like both like Resident Evil 2 remake stuck a lot closer to the original game, whereas Resident Evil 3 it, it definitely did its own thing with some of the locations. I still like it. You can actually see the uh, where Ada got sliced by Birkin when uh, Leon and Ada made their way down here. Which Dawn of the Dead do you like more? The original. Just wait uh, absolutely the original. I'm not the biggest fan of Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead remake. It was way too action-y and not enough character stuff for me. security panel. In case of an emergency, the red light will stay on and you'll be prohibited from entering for a limited time. Oh, you mean until the boss is dead? <laughs> it's like this elevator. It won't stop until the boss is dead. <laughs> oh, God. Wish me luck. Oh, where is he? Here he is. Pops his eyeball. Alright, let's dance. Let's dance, Tyrant. Alright, you get three rounds that I'm bugging out. Turn around. Two more. Move away. He's jumped. Where's he jumping to? Another round. Move away. He's jumped again. Keep moving. Where'd he land? Behind me again, that's fine. He's jumped again. Where to, where to, where to? Do I need to reload? Just doing it just cause. Where'd he land to? I can't see him. Oh, right there. Oh! Oh, fuck. Oh! Oh, did I do him? Is he, oh, he's just mutating. Oh, I did him! No damage. I took no damage. <laughs> Whoo wee Yeah, you're not a fan of running zombies, Matt Midgley? I'm not. I'm not a fan. It works in some movies. It's fine. But um, they become much more action orientated films than... Uh, character pieces. I like my characters in zombie movies. Isn't this That's okay. You keep it. I'm sure it'll keep you safe. Wait here for me, okay? I'm going back to look for your mom. Thanks, Claire. Sherry, wait. Even though I'm an only child, neither of my parents ever spent much time with me because of their work. But now that you're with me, I finally have someone to rely upon. Sherry. Matthew Duba says, I sound like Steve Irwin talking about that monster. Well, here we have the William Birkin in his third stage of his evolution. He has a three-hit combo attack, which can knock you to the ground and do serious damage if you've ill-prepared with, with your green herbs. The Birkin monster as well, 
won't stay for a prolonged fight after receiving numerous amounts of damage he will retreat and look for easier prey <laughs> Which way? Which way? Oh! I said, Sherry, wait! <laughs> Josh, you said about an hour ago you were mentioning Ghostbusters. I watched it last night. Don't. It's aged very well. I, I, I think Ghostbusters is... is Almost time. I, I, I love Ghostbusters. I, I can't see anything wrong with that movie. <laughs> it's, it's my childhood fave. It really is. Well, I didn't need all this health, so I can put all this away now. So here's a, another little puzzle we didn't have to do, I don't think, in the A playthrough. You don't have to solve this puzzle straight away, because uh, we'll come back here, I believe, when we open another doorway up. Oh, I might not have pushed that correctly. We'll see. Yeah, I've still got room to get behind it. <laughs> Crikey, look over there, a tyrant. One slash and I'm dead. I'm going to shoot it. <laughs> yeah, I know you're not a big fan of Ghostbusters, Josh, but, yeah, you know, I'm an 80s kid. and <laughs> Ghostbusters was everything. From the movies, from the cartoons, to the toys, to the sticker books, uh, to the, you know, the dioramas that I had the, with stickers and things. Oh, was, Ghostbusters was everything. I... I Remember my dad, you know, mum and dad were divorced and uh, when I'd spend weekends with my dad and when we were driving, oh wait, I think there's another area, when we would, when you'd be driving me and my brother home, I'd be like, can we play Ghostbusters? And so we would drive just a little bit faster and go round the corners just a little bit faster and me and my brother would be hanging out the windows with our proton packs, shooting at civilians, at passers-by, pretending that they were ghosts. Like, that's how much Ghostbusters was to me. <laughs> it's just brilliantly acted. All the characters are so memorable. The practical effects, yeah, I know some of the practical effects are a little bit ropey now. Fuck me a liquor. Let's get those acid rounds ready. Did it did it hear me? Oh, I've stopped sprinting. Rain shot, go for it. Oh, lucky me. Nope, it's still alive. But not lucky me. Guess these are the uh, evolved liquors. These ones are going to take two shots now. Oh, I got him from range. And All right, and he died from one shot. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, C2, you're a 70s kid, so it's Star Wars for you. Yeah, r absolutely. That's how you feel about off-the-shelf reviews. <laughs> Thanks, Matty Ice. <laughs> yeah, lockdown because of ourselves, not because of zombies. Uh, Gary, how old are me? I'm 37, 38 this year, I think. <laughs> Let me do the maths. I was born in 83. <laughs> You get to this age and you just kind of forget how old you are. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and it's going to keep on not mattering. Yeah, I reckon those liquor sounds are terrifying. And that's what you need to listen out for is the clicking noise, the hissing noise. Then you know you're, you're in liquor territory. You don't just want to sprint right off into them because they'll leap through the air. They'll hit you with the tongue attacks and... I don't want to die. I don't want to die. So yeah, Bill, Bill Murray's usually the everyone's favourite in Ghostbusters, but for me it's, uh, it's Dan Aykroyd and um, 
Harold Ramis. You know, I love love the nerds, love the geeks. Yeah, you know, Venkman's character, he's just he's just too cool. You know. <laughs> Eat grenades! Any more? There's always more. Oh, damn! Oh, shit! Just die! <laughs> Matthew Dubas, you were born in 77. You forget your own age all the time as well. Have to do the maths. Yeah. <laughs> yes, one does not simply run from a liquor. <laughs> you got to remember that liquors are blind. They don't actually have any eyes, so they do everything by sound. Oh, what do I think of Scrooge? Scrooge is one of the best uh, Christmas movies ever. For me, it's one of my absolute favourite uh, Bill Murray movies. That and, and Groundhog Day. Uh, do I need anything? I don't need anything out of the item box. Yeah, Bill Murray's cameo in Zombieland. That always annoyed me. I'm just like, he's always been like, nah, I'm never going to do Ghostbusters again. Never going to do Ghostbusters again. There's a massive Ghostbusters tribute in Zombieland. It's like... <laughs> you know, he at that point, he still had his grudge uh, with Harold Ramis. You know, their friendship came to that unfortunate end. Well, it's good that... Um, they reconciled before before he passed away because they were lifelong friends i think it was up until scrooge i think was the uh was it scrooge or it was groundhog day that, that split them up oh, no no liquors in here we'll take the fuse case and put it right here. Oh, I think I can skip that cutscene. Yeah. Don't need to see that play out again. Ignore that first aid spray. Um, so get the power back on. I'm just trying to think. And then head downstairs. Speaking of Bill, Gary, your thoughts on Dead Don't Die? I haven't actually watched it yet. I've, I've got it here. I've had, a, I've had a copy sat here for quite a while. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll watch, the, watch that over the weekend. I'll tell you, when I was... As I said, I wasn't feeling too well earlier in the week, so... I watched both the... Uh, uh, Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle and Jumanji the Second Level which I quite enjoyed actually. Enjoyed the first one again even on its second viewing. Oh shit the plant people. Let's get those flame rounds equipped really quick. Let's actually make some distance before I get spat on. Favourite Beatles song? Um... I don't know, it's quite hard. There's so many good ones. Um, I love Nowhere Man. I think that's a great song. Uh, I love Eleanor Rigby. That's a great song. Uh, Let It Be. Yellow Submarine. I think those are my favourites. There's probably others I just can't remember the, the titles of. <laughs> My weakness is cake. <laughs> yeah. They did a few things in the second one that um, I was quite surprised that they that they had done. Is there? Oh, it's still on the switch. I don't need to. No, I didn't poison me. No, that's fine. Uh, Will and Matt, you watched the Indiana Jones and Last Crusade last night. I have to ask out of the original three or four film, which is your favourite? Well, I'm glad I paused it there for a second because I can hear the liquors in the room. Um, I think The Last Crusade is probably my favourite. Oh, fuck, I missed. No! Did he die? He died. 
Ooh. Yeah, I think The Last Crusade is my favourite. Although, uh, I always used to love watching the uh, the Temple of Doom with me mum. Uh, that was her favourite of the of the Indiana Jones movies. But yeah, I love the whole search for the Holy Grail. Um, I love the, the sequence in the church, the Da Vinci Code, kind of trying to find all the clues. The X marks the spot. And the Tunnel of Rats. And the high-speed boat chase sequence. Um, and then all of the traps at the end. Only the penitent man will pass. <laughs> oh, fuck! Oh, shit. I, I was so... I'm still injured, and I was like, that acid's gonna kill me! <laughs> Can't beat the original Jumanji. Yeah, I mean, there's a nice little tribute to... Uh, to Robin Williams in in the uh, the updated Jumanji film, which says it's kind of set in the same universe, because the uh, the pilot that they find um, he's staying in a uh, in a house that's been built in the forest, and he's just like, yeah, you know, I didn't build this place; it was here before I got here. And carved in the wood was, you know, Robin Williams was here. It doesn't say Robin Williams; it says his character's name. I can't can't remember his name. I think it was Adam. Um, but yeah, so there was a nice little touching Easter egg in 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 the film. But yeah, there's there's so you know the 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 new versions of you know they've more than made up for not having Robin Williams by having you know Jack Black and The Rock. Yeah, they they got enough charisma and chemistry to uh, to make those films really work. I thought I could hear you lick. Oh, there's another one. surprise liquor. Can I shoot your friend from back here? Nope. Ah, he's teasing me out. Oh, shot! Did I still missed? No! No, he's licking me! I can hear another one. Fuck! Where are you? Oh, he's right there. Oh, got him from range. It's so rare to be able to shoot a liquor from range with a grenade launcher because it has that. You know, the liquors are crouched on the ground. Most of the shots just fly right over the heads. Yeah, yeah, the Jumanji sequel films, they, they are silly, but, you know, there's there's definitely some adult humour in there. <laughs> Especially when, you know, they kind of gender swap, and it's like, oh shit, you know, I've got boobs. Oh shit, you know, I've got a penis. <laughs> there's a few of those kind of jokes. that. Oh, it's just a map. We'll take the map. Don't really need it, but we'll take it. Um, I think I might need the weapon box key soon. We'll put one of those away. Should be fine. Surprise liquor sounds like a sex offender name. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, it's the moth room. Let's go kill ourselves a giant moth. I think Leon ran away from it. Yeah, you need a popcorn movie every now and again. And like I said, I wasn't feeling too great, so, you know, putting Jumanji on was just great. It was just light entertainment. I think that shot went right over his. went right over him. He's done for. Uh, I think I need a grenade round to get the bugs off the computer terminal. And again. Come on, Claire. There we go. It's one buggy computer. Uh, it's guest, isn't it? G U E S T. That's not how you spell guest, Jill. Claire, whichever. No, that's also not how you spell guest. Try and do it quickly and make mistakes. Yes, yeah, I'm Jill. I'm feeling much better now. Um, I was still feeling pretty bad on Wednesday uh, when I actually recorded the most recent review, but uh, I kind of saved up all my energy for the recording, and so I kind of crashed almost right afterwards. 
Uh, Matt Midget says, hey, Gary, how are you finding the last season of The Walking Dead, or the latest? Yeah, I'm loving it. The, the Whisper of War has been done really well. Uh, really enjoying really enjoying The Walking Dead. Uh, it's a shame that they've had to delay the last episode. You know, it's the last episode of season is it 10. Uh, really looking forward to, uh, to it. I've been told to expect a few character deaths, so... Oh my. Uh, it's one of the reasons why it's been delayed is because the team doing the special effects on the final episode of, you know, they, they can't work at the moment, so that's why the last episode's not aired. But I also think that the, the, the creators of the show know that this last episode is... It's, it's going to be a little bit upsetting, and I don't think they wanted to release it during, you know, this time. But, yeah. I still can't wait for it. Oh, shit. That's enough of you lot. Anything in here? Oh. Oh, the power room key. Okay, that's where we pushed that crate earlier. I don't think there's anything else in here. Nope. We got what we came for. Uh, this way. How many seasons now? I think it's on its 10th. I think the 10th season's about to finish uh, with the next episode. The last episode. Yeah, 10. And I think Fear the Walking Dead's about to go into its 6th season, I think. Um, do I need to put anything away? Have I got a boss fight coming up? I can't remember. I think I'm okay with what I'm carrying. Oh. Annette! Where's Sherry? But I asked her and she's never even heard of the G-Virus before. Which room? Tell me. Sherry! Sherry, wait! Oh, well. No! Look what you got and done. Annette! The samples inside the pendant Sherry's wearing. Annette, wait! Everybody, wait! <laughs> you dropped out of Fear of the Walking Dead? Yes, yeah, understandable. Some people gave up during the first. Oh, fuck! <laughs> it's my go to response when I get surprised. <sighs> what was I saying? Yeah, a lot of people dropped out of Fear of the Walking Dead. It's understandable, it had a ropey first season. But season two and season three of Fear of the Walking Dead were, in, in my opinion, better than the majority of The Walking Dead. Really got to know the characters, really liked them, the situation they were in. Uh, but then, then, then they uh, brought Morgan over from The Walking Dead. Killed off three quarters of the Fear of the Walking Dead cast, did some horrible time jumping, and and killed off a lot of interest for the show. But then, thankfully, they they did introduce to me two of my favourite Walking Dead characters, um, which for me just grew from strength to strength as the as the show's gone on. Um, and so I kind of watched the Fear of the Walking Dead for those two characters now. But it's 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 never gonna regain the strength that it had come the end of season three. I'm just trying to figure out which way I need to go. Oh, I need to go to the power room, which is not this way. It's this way. Where's it? I'm going to go in here and grab all the healing items. I can't remember when the next boss fight is, and I don't want to run into it unprepared. Do I need that card anymore? I don't even know if I need that card anymore. We'll take all of that. That should be enough. I'm not sure if it's the boss fight or not. Uh, the Afterlife TV series? That's the, uh, the Ricky Gervais TV series? I think season two should have just dropped, like, yesterday maybe, or today even. 
It's about him dealing with the loss of his wife. And how he's just become a cynical, miserable old bastard as a result. And by the end of the first season, he's kind of, kind of, you know, moves on. And I think the second series uh, from the trailer is about him helping others move on the same way that others helped him move on. So I'm like, it's still going to be that cynical Ricky Gervais kind of offensive humour, which I quite like. Because <laughs> it's not very politically correct. And sometimes you need that. So I'm quite looking forward to it, to season two of Afterlife. I recently watched, uh, re well, re-watched The Invention of Lying with Ricky Gervais. Yeah, it's good fun. It's uh, another one of those wake up in a strange alternate dimension where, you know, nobody can lie. Sherry! Stupid Tyrant. Run, <laughs> As for you, come and get it. I've got what you want. Come on. Here. This is what you're looking for, right? Uh, then go get it. <laughs> Stupid Tyrant. <laughs> Sucker. Sucker. <laughs> Self destruction. Oops. Did I do that? This sequence may not be aborted. All employees proceed to the emergency car at the bottom platform. You heard her, Claire. It's time to get the out of wrong way, Claire. You gotta go. Now. We definitely know we're at the end game now. What awfully big claws you have, Mr. X. Sherry, where are you? Where is she? Come on, Claire, let's go. Stop humming in our ring, let's go. So tense hearing that music kicking in and that constant warning. Oh my god. <laughs> Ricky Gervais saying that a bunch of Hollywood elites, uh, that Jeffrey Epstein was their friend, is going to be my all time favourite joke. <laughs> Yeah, his uh, was it the Golden Globes that he did the uh, the opening for, and just the reactions of all the celebrities' faces was just priceless. <laughs> I loved Tom Hanks's expression, like, oh, like thought this was going to be a family affair. <laughs> oh, my sensibilities, I'm offended. <laughs> Sometimes you need a heavy dose of, you know. Political incorrectness. <laughs> Mom. Mom. Sherry, you have to escape. I know I've been a terrible mother, but I still love you. No. Forgive me. Not your day, Sherry, girl. We have to go now. What she got there? Yeah. Oh, the master key. Come on, Sherry. We got no time to grieve. All 
I saw somebody mention that the uh, the Predator game came out today. Pretty good. Um, I would prefer if it came out on Steam instead of on uh, on Epic Game Store, but yeah, what are you gonna do? I think it's only it's also exclusive to the PlayStation, I think as well, not on Xbox. A damn Sony. An emergency passage passageway is visible. Will you go down now? Yes. It's a train, Claire. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Extended pause. Final boss fight coming up. And Sam Chill says, "Have you ever thrown yourself into uh, a tog, Gary? What's a what's a tog? I'm gonna say no because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm still carrying around that key card. Oh, I know why. It's because even though I put my finger in the." password bleeper thing. I didn't actually go and open the other room. Oops. Um, let's put those away. I think that should be enough. Any other healing? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's all about I can carry. Because I need inventory space to carry the plugs. Oh. Yeah, I'll also need uh, the space to get the RPG. I think Ada drops the RPG. This way? Yeah, yeah, okay, useless now. Ooh, sorry, lol, autocorrect. RPG. <laughs> ever, ever thrown myself into an RPG? Um, I mean, it depends what you class as an RPG, but um, I guess I, you know, I I prefer the prefer the Western action RPGs, <laughs> like The Witcher. Um, but I haven't played a, like a turn-based RPG game in, in quite a while. Oh. I think the last the last turn-based one I played was the uh, original Final Fantasy uh, game. But I didn't actually even finish it. I think I got just before the third disc and then um, that's kind of, kind of done. <laughs> Eric Draven. Gary, has anybody ever told you that you look like Kane and Lynch's Lynch, younger version, just eyeglasses missing? <laughs> Yeah, it's been it's been mentioned before. I've also been told I look like Wayne Grow. Then I think Rob, Robert Picton is it? I've been told I look like quite a few um, notorious serial killers. Yeah, Kane and Lynch were bad games. Well, wasted potential because they were interesting, horrible characters. Yeah, I played Civilization. I played one through five. I played six, like, for about half an hour. Oh, oh fuck me. Uh. I'm still fine? How does that work? Oh, Ada! Ada, wait! Oh, fuck me. Oh, fuck me. I managed to dodge that. Oh, and again. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. And move away and equip and you lose, big guy. Oh, I done it. Whew. 
still on the timer though, still got to get back. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, acid rounds. No, uh, flame rounds. No, acid rounds. I don't know what I want. I just remember I got to do the bit on the train. I've also got to release the train as well. Oh my god. Three and a half minutes. <laughs> no, now's not the time to get stuck. Uh, yeah, I've got to release the train still. Oh, zombies. Lots of zombies. Burn them. Burn them. Oh, I got a twofer. Yep, let's turn on the gate. Oh, God, we're wasting time. Like, why did you have to stand there? <laughs> In we go. Get this train going. All those pretty neon lights. I can't actually skip this cutscene either. It's like it's the same one that played when um, we finished it with Leon. If I hear that one more time. Ah, uh, my God has protected you. It will always be with you. Claire, Sherry. I do hope the countdown stopped while all this is going on. <laughs> I like that Leon's also in the costume that we had uh, had selected for him in the A playthrough as well. Biohazardous outbreak imminent. The emergency system has been activated. This train will detonate. Repeat, this train will detonate. No, nope, just a new timer, What's I think. What's wrong with this thing? I don't know. The door won't open. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> The music in this section is also epic when it reveals itself. Yeah, at first, like, oh, it's a giant liquor. <laughs> it's the end of the Resident Evil 1 movie. That scared the life out of me when I was a kid playing this game. It's like. <laughs> He thought it was over, and then that. Blech. Literally a wall of flesh with teeth and eyeballs. Run away, bravely run away, away. Come on, Claire, turn around. Stop staring at it. Run! Burn it with fire! Um, okay, we got one. We got one left. Take this! Well, that was enough to kill Nemesis! Uh, Nemesis Tyrant! Mr. X! Whatever it was. We've done it! We've done it! Yeah, Josh, I think Ian is, um... He's just about a year older than me, I think. 
Do I have to run away? No. It's automatic. Well, yeah, Ian is, is, a, is a deity, so, you know, time works differently for Ian. <laughs> It's just time now for the final cut sequence. Yep. Warning. Cheers, Matt Midgley. I just hope I've didn't done it in enough time. I've definitely done it without saving. Didn't use any first aid sprays. I just hope now that I've done it in under three hours. I also can't skip the cut sequence, so we'll just have to let it play out. So freakish. <laughs> Cheers, Sam. Chill. That's what I call a... Claire, where are you? Am um, I using a game shark? Nope. No, I mean, they never used the G-Virus in the other games, but, um, I mean, the Hunk storyline is canon, I believe, and he does escape this game with a sample of the G-Virus. Such a cinematic action finale to the game, I love it. <laughs> Like most of the other games, they literally almost end moments after you blow up the, the tyrant with a rocket launcher. I love all this added on ending. <laughs> yeah, their faces look really strange. <laughs> I mean, I can't talk. <laughs> was a close one. That was pretty impressive back there, Sherry. It was nothing. I saw someone do that on TV once. <laughs> Come on. I saw I someone do that on TV now once. Is something following us? Hey, I wonder if it's a reference to an actual TV show or something. Go. Go? I don't know. Oh, you can't mean. Chris, I have to find you. Yeah, Claire, we get it. You gotta find your brother. <laughs> We'll see you in Code Veronica at some point down the line, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm not really in a major rush to go back to Code Veronica. I do like the game. It's just, you know, it's it's not Resident Evil 1, 2, or 3, is it? <laughs> it's still, I still prefer Code Veronica to, uh, I'd say, Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6, and 7. Um, because it is still the old school style. You know, the fixed camera angles, although the camera moves, you know, a lot more in uh, in Code Veronica than it does in the other three. Even though it's still a fixed camera. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I will be bringing this stream to uh, to an end uh, once the credits roll out and I get the ranking. Uh, I do know that Ian is looking to stream some more. He did mention streaming today. I'm not sure if you will or not. Um... But I know he's got uh, some more Resident Evil games lined up, or, or something else. Mongo Mongo, who's Veronica? Veronica is one of the founding members of Umbrella, who passed away many, many, many years ago. And it's her grandchildren, I believe, who are the protagonists in Code Veronica. I also remember that Veronica is the password that you put in at the end of the game to trigger the self-destruct device. <laughs> uh, but it's the... Um, who, who's the two children? It's... Um, I can't, I'm trying to remember the... It's... Uh, is it Alessa? Or was that Silent Hill? I can't remember. <laughs> Uh, 
Hence the need to do a replay of Code Veronica. The only reason why I don't want to do it is because I don't want to have to spend all that time with, with Steve. Can't trust people. They'll only let you down. Should trust in guns only. Plus all the uh, cross-dressing. Yeah, the Ashford twins, that's it. And the cross-dressing... Is it... I can't remember his name, but very weird. <laughs> Alexia. I was close. A lesser Alexia. Oh, it's grading time. It's grading time. Do I have to press the button? Yay! It was only two hours and 20 minutes. Oh, I had plenty of time. <laughs> I guess time does stop during the cut sequences. <laughs> awesome. What a relief. I did it. <laughs> well, on that note, I just want to thank you all for joining the stream today. It's been an absolute pleasure to hang out with all of you shelfers, all of you that are maybe lurking and, and never commented. Thank you for, uh, for, 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 for being there. Uh, thank you all to my Patreons, for all of you that have um, signed up on the YouTube membership, those that are on the Discord. Uh, if you want to hang out with us some more, the Discord channel is open to everybody. Uh, we uh, will. I know Ian is taking gaming suggestions on there as well. Oh wow, I've unlocked infinite everything. <laughs> well, on that note, I just want to say thanks for watching everyone. Um, Ian will be streaming soon. Um, if you don't hear from me, I'll definitely be streaming again next Friday. Of course, new film reviews on Thursdays. Take it easy, everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you all very, very soon.